Hi and welcome to The Honest Channel. I'm Claire Johnston, a journalist on a mission to discover how to age well, look and feel good for longer and share that honestly with you. And today we're going to explore something that's gathering momentum on social media and which I've been asked by several viewers recently to take a look at and that's whether the hormone oestrogen, pronounced estrogen in the States, has potential as an anti-aging treatment for our skin. Insufficient levels of oestrogen decrease the skin's defences against oxidative stress and it becomes thinner with less collagen, decreased elasticity, increased wrinkling and dryness. Conversely, several studies link the increase in our levels of oestrogen with improved collagen production and skin hydration and reduced inflammation. So now TikTok is alight with influencers sharing the ways in which they're using the hormone in their anti-aging skincare routines. But adding oestrogen into your cosmetic routine isn't to be done lightly. And so to help me discuss this subject ethically, I'm joined by aesthetic specialist Dr. Qian Xu, who's based in London, and Dr. Emily Ashley, who recently moved to the Cayman Islands, and both doctors also have significant general medical experience. So let's find out what oestrogen does for our skin and what we should consider before applying it to our faces. So we know oestrogen plays a vital role in the function of female reproductive organs, but it's also identified as playing an important role in other crucial areas of our health, including bone and even heart health, which is why it's increasingly being regarded as an anti-aging treatment as well as a treatment for menopause symptoms. So it's a hugely important hormone and as our levels fall, we can get those unwanted signs and symptoms, including to our skin. So I started my discussion with Dr. Emmeline and Dr. Chien by asking why oestrogen in particular is being promoted quite so widely at the moment by some as a powerful tool in protecting and rejuvenating our skin as we age. So the use of estrogen in facial skin care, I think it's garnered a lot of attention because we're understanding more and more about the role that estrogen plays in skin health, or maybe more specifically, what effect the loss of estrogen can have on women as we age, particularly in the context of perimenopause or menopause. So in a nutshell, with estrogen, we know that estrogen helps to retain moisture in the skin and hydration. It promotes sebum production. Um, and a common complaint in perimenopausal or menopausal women is skin dryness and that diminished sebum production. So estrogen can elevate um, certain mucopolysaccharides and hyaluronic acid in the dermis, all improving in hydration and moisture. Um, we also know collagen is a key protein in the skin, so it's what gives it a lot of its structure and that nice, youthful sort of bounce that I always talk about. And a, a lot of aesthetic treatments, as you'll probably be familiar with, are all about collagen, collagen banking, collagen preservation, collagen stimulation. Um, with menopause, a commonly quoted figure is that women can lose 30% of their collagen in the first five years. So it's completely um, understandable that women heading into this period of their life will notice thinning skin, wrinkles, laxity. Um, we also know that there are hormonal influences in pigment. So estrogen helps regulate pigment um, melanin production. So that's the pigment that gives our skin its individual um, tones. Um, and we also know that so certain types of pigmentation can be associated with hormones like melasma, which is commonly called the mask of pregnancy, or um, the oral contraceptive pill has been associated with um, pigmentation. So we know it plays a role in that aspect of the skin as well. Um, and then finally, there have been some studies that have looked at things like um, reduced blood flow um, that can occur during menopause with the loss of estrogen, which causes delayed wound healing. So again, overall sort of a reduction in the delivery of nutrients and oxygen to the skin. So knowing all of these profound effects that estrogen can have on the skin, it's not surprising that when we're starting to look at rejuvenating the skin, particularly thinking about the fact that, you know, we're living longer and longer, women might be spending up to half of their life or certainly a third of their life in menopause. So it is part about looking at the overall holistic approach to skin health um, in women. You've got to think about hormones and you've got to think about menopause. Yeah. And of course, traditionally, we think of uh, hormone replacement therapy as something we take in pill, patch, uh, gel form that's applied to the body. De applying it directly to the face is... is um, 
a fairly new concept. I mean, Dr. Chen, listening to that, do you think it's a good idea to use estrogen on our skin and something you might be tempted to do as we age? Well, that's actually a really big question. And, you know, as with most most things, if not everything in medicine, there's no absolute guarantees. And first of all, I just want to um, kind of put a disclaimer out there. I'm not an expert in home, hormone therapy. It is something mm. that some doctors then undergo speci- uh, special training um, to become experts in mm. uh, prescribing hormone replacement therapy. So I can't speak as an expert that um, prescribes the, the therapies, but I do work with doctors who do hormone replacement therapy. Um, and, you know, I often talk to them about this kind of thing in relation to skin health. Mm. Um, and being sort of quite a holistic doctor myself, I find this topic really interesting because the way that I approach anti-aging treatments or, or skin rejuvenation tends to be quite holistic anyway. And adding in the hormone element of it just makes it a, that little bit more sophisticated and, and a bit more holistic. Given all the evidence out there in sort of the benefit of estrogen on the whole body, um, but in particular the skin um, in relation to what we're talking about, I wouldn't necessarily mm. jump straight into it because as with most things, there are pros and cons, um, which we'll I'm sure we'll discuss um, a bit later in this discussion. But I'm as a as a whole I definitely am interested I agree with Dr. Chen Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I also I'm not an HRT specialist by any means Um, I'm always someone who is quite conservative um, in how I approach treatments especially when I don't have that specific expertise and if I am in a position where I'm going to potentially be making recommendations to patients um, if you look at the current guidelines so the a nice guideline so that's the national institute of clinical excellence so they're sort of the consensus guidelines from the people who have real expertise in this area and the british menopause society um when it comes to hrt they say it should be first line for um vasomotor symptoms so like hot flushes sweating and also for mood other things you might want to explore other options first so again there are risks with any medical intervention Um, hormones that can potentially be uh, absorbed systemically are going to have effects on various areas of the body. So you really have to balance that with what you're trying to achieve um, and have a very individualized, tailored approach. Key here is really that people should be using these things under guidance. They shouldn't be trying to get hold of it themselves. You know, it might be really cheap to, to source from somewhere. And just because you watch someone who shows a hack on TikTok um, that it's working for them, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe and that it will work for you as an individual. So it's definitely the the key here is to seek medical advice and to use these things under guidance. A a doctor would be able to... um, go through all the potential risks, make sure it's safe for them to start using it and then prescribe the the relevant doses. I think if you are taking um, oral HRT, um, again, you'll be getting that through your doctor um, and they should be able to advise you whether you can use the cream as well on top of that. Um, And you'll be monitored by your doctor for any side effects and for the effectiveness of HRT as well. So and the other things that you need to keep an eye on, like, for example, monitoring the breast tissue, the tissue in the womb, just to make sure there are no um, abnormal changes while you're on HRT. So if you're using this under guidance, then your doctor would be able to advise you and, and keep an eye on those things that would be potential risks. If you were to source this yourself and start using it, you have no idea what it is you're doing and the effects that that it's having on you. And that's where the potential risks come. Um, Just because it's in cream form, it doesn't mean that it can't be absorbed systemically. In fact, um, it can. We're just not sure how much. So that's what makes it difficult to monitor as well. Um, And also estrogen comes in many different forms um so it's also about using the right form of estrogen that's going to be effective and not as harmful so it's actually a really complicated matter two forms of estrogen estradiol and estriol have been studied for their potential benefits in treating skin aging both have shown promise in improving skin texture reducing wrinkles and enhancing overall complexion But there are some key differences between the two that may influence your thinking. So estradiol is the more potent form of estrogen, meaning it has stronger effects on the body. And studies have shown 
that estradiol can effectively improve skin thickness, elasticity and hydration, but it carries a higher risk of side effects. Estriol is the weaker form of estrogen, meaning its effects on the body are less pronounced. Studies say that estriol is effective in improving skin hydration and elasticity, but its effects on wrinkles may be less pronounced than estradiol. However, Estriol is generally considered safer than estradiol with a lower risk of side effects. Further complicating the issue is how the estrogen is used. Studies suggest that some low-dose vaginal creams minimally increase estrogen in your blood and not to levels observed with oral or transdermal estrogen products. And that's why we're seeing people on TikTok applying those creams to their faces in the belief that the beneficial effects will be localised. But the science suggests that's not a foolproof approach and you still need to discuss it with a doctor if you're using any estrogen-based product. And for those who are already using some form of HRT, either orally or as a transdermal product, I asked Dr. Chen if that in itself would benefit the skin on our face and necks without having to apply estrogen directly to them. She pointed to a placebo-controlled study that reported that when estradiol was applied topically to the forearms of menopausal women, an improvement in skin texture under microscope was not only picked up on the application site, but also on the cheeks. So what does that mean? And obviously the cream was applied on the forearm, not on the face directly. So that shows, first of all, that some of the cream was absorbed into the system and it had a systemic effect. And secondly, you know, it shows that you don't have to apply the cream directly on the face to get that that result. You know, it's a very simple study, but I, I think it demonstrates that if you are taking oral HRT, some of it will definitely get to the skin because if you're taking oral tablets, that's having a systemic an overall effect on your whole body, not just a specific area. I was just going to add, um, in terms of sort of current guidelines around HRT prescribing, the recommendation is that you use the lowest dose mm. that will control symptoms. So if you're already having HRT prescribed for something else and it's, con you know, it's doing what it's meant to be doing for that, and then you're using some additional. So you mentioned TikTok and I have seen it on TikTok where people have been prescribed estrogen for say vaginal dryness or something. And they say, oh, and I've started using it on my face they're not using it in the way the doctor has recommended or the doctor may be aware of. So again, back to the way, um, to what we were just saying about systemic absorption being possible even with application to the skin. If we're then having someone who's increasing their dose of estrogen without their clinician's guidance or knowledge, then that could be inherently risky. Well, that was going to be my next question for you, uh, Dr. Emmeline. You know, is there, from the research you've seen, a best form of oestrogen to use on the face? I haven't yet seen, and there might be something mm -hmm. out there, but certainly none of the studies I looked at had really compelling evidence, mm -hmm. you know, one way or the other. And, and this is a common problem sometimes in a lot of studies that maybe are dealing with um, more aesthetic or cosmetic type treatments or concerns is usually they're done with very small numbers. So it's difficult to take those results and um, extrapolate them to the general population or they're done in laboratory settings. And as we know, you know, our bodies are not in perfect sterile lab conditions. There's lots of other factors and things going on. Uh, so I wish I had a good answer for you, um, but I don't. I don't know of um, a type of estrogen if you were to use it on the face that would be innately superior or safer than any other type of estrogen. I know there are some newer types of estrogen um, receptor agonists that are in development, um, but that's sort of a, a separate thing as well. There's one I noticed, uh, a kind of newish one on the market called um, methyl estradiol propanoate, or MEP. I like the abbreviated version better. Let's go with MEP. And I think that one's sold by a brand called Emipel. Um, it's something I intend to look at in more detail, as you can imagine, on the channel. Um, so I'm, I'm going to sort of link to some to some information about that in the description if people want to take um, a look at it. There's been some research done around that. But it's described as an estrogen analogue. Is that what, what you were kind of referring to? So it's not a hormone, but it behaves like one in the skin. But although it's not believed to be uh, to do anything systemically, rather. So, you know, could, could that be a preferable route for some people who are who are worried about using actual hormones on their skin? 
Potentially, if its claims are accurate and, and all mm -hmm. the evidence for it is positive from what I've seen, um, it does, it acts um, specifically on estrogen receptors in the skin and then it's broken down into inactive metabolites before entering the bloodstream is, is what right. they say about it. Um, so it's offering those benefits to the skin potentially without the systemic risks. Um, so those sorts of things are certainly really interesting to me. Um, I definitely have to look into them further and read up about them a bit more to really understand kind of the mechanism of action behind it. But there, there's certainly um, been a lot of positive feedback about them um, so far and interesting write-ups in some of the journals. Yeah, I mean, this is a big issue, Dr. Chen, when you think about it, because it's all over TikTok. And people are starting to do this and, and bluntly they're starting to take their vaginal creams which you can you can order online so i'm sure people are starting to do that we can see that on tiktok and it's you know you're either going to somebody who is an hrt specialist um for the body that's what they're trained in or you're going to somebody who deals in aesthetics or dermatology for the face and the two are you know the, these are these are very different specialties um, and that's an awkward overlap here because this is going to be coming up more and more often among patients. Um, could you see uh, potential for some new form of training coming through here or um, even hormone specialists working more closely with uh, aesthetic specialists and dermatologists? Um, I, I think uh, better training is always needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the skin... It does not exist in isolation. The skin is one of the largest, it is the largest organ in the body. And it's one of the bodily systems that works with all the other body systems. And often the health of the skin or the appearance of the skin is a reflection of the health of the whole body. And we can't look at the skin in isolation, just like when we do aesthetic treatments, if we are doing it with the, um, uh, with the aim of kind of rejuvenating the face and sort of doing more anti-aging treatments. We can't just be filling every single wrinkle and puffing everything out. That's not how the face ages. That's not how it works. So when it comes to the benefit of um, hormone therapy on the skin, there are definitely some benefits there to be had. The amount of estrogen in the body reduces with uh, perimenopausal period and the menopause. It also has other more kind of health implications on the rest of the body as well the other body body systems if it's show if the skin is are showing issues of um be, lack of estrogen then other body systems will also have this issue so i think in terms of looking at hormone replacement therapy we shouldn't be looking at it just for the benefit of the skin because estrogen mm -hmm. also has benefits on the other parts of the body you just using the cream topically on the on the face is not necessarily the answer you know i think we should be um, aiming for an optimum level of estrogen for the person as a whole and then every part of the body will benefit including the skin to achieve that then you need to work with someone who is specialized in working with hormones um and and know kind of how much you need to treat your certain symptoms or to prevent symptoms because the, the doses that you would use would be different depending on your your personal circumstances. I would say I am skeptical about everything. Anytime someone tells me there's this new cream that works or this is the secret that no other doctors want you to know about, this will transform your skin. I'm so, so, so skeptical. So I would just say to any potential patients out there, just be have healthy skepticism and just really look at who's making the claims, why they're making the claims and do they maybe benefit financially from anything that's being sold to you. Okay. Thank you so much for your time as always um, and I'll look forward to our next discussion. So the decision around whether or not to use oestrogen as an anti-aging treatment is a personal one, as it is for hormone replacement therapy during menopause and it's one that should be made after careful consideration of the risks and benefits and in talking to a doctor. From my own perspective, I apply a small amount of estradiol gel on my upper arms each day to help prevent some of the less tolerable effects of menopause, including hot flushes. The fact that this might help my skin is an added bonus, but I'm still very conservative over the amounts I use and I'm trying to use the minimum amount that relieves my symptoms. And if you're considering using oestrogen, it is important to talk to your doctor first about your individual risk factors. 
This video isn't intended to provide medical advice, but rather just provide you with balanced information. And as ever, I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this and also your own experience. Have you used estrogen on your face? Or have you observed changes in your skin since using HRT more generally? Well, that's it from me for today. And you can find more information and advice around aging well and skincare on my website, honest.scott. And if you enjoyed this video, then by liking it and subscribing, if you haven't already, you help this channel grow and bring more great topics and guests to discuss them with. For now, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.